Nigeria is Africa's wealthiest and most populous nation, with the fastest growing economy. Agriculture contributes 25.2% of the gross domestic product. The Nigerian agricultural sector holds the key to the country's drive for economic diversification. This is because of its role in ensuring food security, promoting industrialization, providing jobs, and fostering shared prosperity. Nigeria was part of the 2003 Maputo Declaration that mandated all African Union member countries to allocate at least 10% of their total annual budgets to agriculture. This was done as one of the ways to increase food sufficiency in the continent. However, data shows that in the last two decades, Nigeria has consistently defaulted on this commitment. An average of 1.6% was dedicated to agriculture over the five years and capital releases averaged 56.18%. But even with the allocated funds, how much got to the farmers? Plus TV Africa spoke to five members of the smallholder women farmers, Swofun, to find out if they got access to training, funds and equipment. I've not volunteered for the Anchor from Poor High School program. There was a time that they came for this. Some people organized, I, I think they are agents of, the, to, they organized it. They came here to a place here to do the training for us. But after that, nothing. We have, never, we have not benefited at all from Anchor's program. We are very about it, but nothing from there. Like the CBN National know, I went for the interview, did everything, but nothing for, for now. They will tell us that, that, that I was hold on since 2019. And maybe because of last year's um, pandemic and everything, but since that time, nothing from there. Hi, I've collected loan from Bank of Agric. I'm not collected from NYSHA. I was part of those that were supposed to collect after, after around April. But because of this pandemic, I told them they should hold back to their loans first. Let me see what the, the economy will look like before I can go and collect loan. Or oh, Bank of Agric, I've collected loan from Bank of Agric. It's one of the loans, the loans I collected or what I used in constructing my smoking claim, the smoking claim behind. So it was part of the loan. I collected them um, about um, 300,000 from Bank of Agric. The smoking claim was to cost about 750,000. So they gave me 300,000. Then I now added the balance to do my smoking claim. That was in 2015. I have not received any form of loan from either state government or federal government. I actually applied for the CBN loan. I've gone to, to CBN for an interview. I have even received an offer letter. But that offer letter came just at the time of the lockdown. You understand? So when they kept calling just before the complete lockdown, come and take the loan. I didn't want to take the loan. In fact, the CBN Abuja called me. Don't you want the loan? I said, I want the loan, but I can't take a loan that I'm not, that has a, a, a period of payment. You understand? You have given me some three, four months. We don't know what's happening this, when it's going to end, when business will pick up. And I'm going to pay back that loan with interest. So I declined the loan. I said, until the corona period is over. And that was just the first month of the corona lockdown. And see, it took a whole 11, 12 months before it came down. Business is just trying to pick up. I was opportunity to benefit from, from a, a CBN a loan through uh, NAXA Macrofinance. So with the cost of things, materials, feeding, feed, in fact, the loan is even ineffective. How much did you get from Nasha? 3.5, which uh, didn't go anywhere. With the cost of uh, things, I even if not that I have my own uh, capital, it will not go anywhere. Can't even buy the, most of the things I needed, like uh, generator now. Um, generator is 3 point something, which I'm even trying to get. That, is one, that was one of the things I even uh, processing. So even though DOC, when we, were, when we were applying for it, DOC that time was uh, 180, 200. 
that's a point of, uh, that's a, a day old of umbrellas. But now it's a, four, a 450. That time it was uh, from uh, 180, I even applied, I said 180 or so, or 200. By the time the loan came out, it was uh, 420, four, four 3, uh, 380. So I could not really, the loan was almost ineffective. It didn't go anywhere. O shoro popo lati ri owo yen gba gbogbo ona lati gbo owo yen o shoro sugbon tori pe temi o po ko shoro awon ti owo won po bi million mewa gbogbo nkan to ni ko mu wa o fi shoro awon to ma ni ko se garanto fun won ko fi le se garanto ko fi gba se garanto to ba tun wa se gbogbo etan won o tun te te gbe ole won lowo ngba to fun mi ni to ge owo yen ku odun lati fenu so eni ti o ni to de fe sise to mo ise ko je nu won o gba ati pe ti o ba nse pe covid pandemic to jade ni don don ni ki ko 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 ti bi bi nkan re sugbon pelu pandemic e gbogbo e lo leyin na ni ensas leyin na ni gbogbo awon nkan ti o nsele ta foju ko we have not got anything from federal government, nothing at all. I don't even think they know that we are really exist. I think it's Lagos, it's state government are really close to the farmers. For federal government, nothing. Suppose Uncle Boy is supposed to be from federal government, but it has not really. We have not gotten anything at all. All the loans that we have applied for, even with the Nystra, um, they've not been giving out loans. They say, I don't know what is happening. They said that um, they still told them to hold on to the loans that they want those that have collected to pay back. So we have not assessed loan between last year and this year. There is no bank to assist us to because they are really afraid. This is a sky high risk business. That's what they always tell you. That when they come because it is a living their life. So anything can happen anytime. So they are not ready to really assist us. Some banks will tell you that ah they have a Greek a Greek a Greek desk. When you get that, they will tell you sorry, madam. It's really when it comes to women, they will tell you sorry, madam. That's why the victimization comes in. They say, sorry, madam, who is going to guarantee you? Uh, blah, 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 blah. You're a woman, we can't do much with you if anything happens. That's just it. For many who haven't accessed the loans, they rely on their local cooperatives. Thanks to my Obonga cooperative. So we have, we, we do something, it's more something like what the Yoruba we can say, Ajo. Every month, we drop something. So when you need a loan, you can go and take a loan. No matter how small, it's still better than nothing. And at a very low one digit uh, interest rate, you understand? It's we, we. We do the contribution. This, uh, this uh, month, somebody, many people take, you take, you use it for your business, turn it over two, three months, you return, another person takes. That's how we have been helping ourselves. Thank God for Bunge, because we are, it's a cooperative. So most times, what you do is that you borrow from there. You feed your, your, your fish, you return after, sell, after selling the fish. But most times, our, our major challenge is the cost of feeding. It is really, really challenging. I have not received any equipment, not even feed. I have not received. As for tra training, no. I have not received any training from either state government or federal government. I have not received any training. Apart from my, um, my cooperative meetings, agricultural, uh, Obonga Women Cooperative, they give us training once in a while. Training. Yes. So that's just like personal, not government. The Lagos State trained us on a capacity building. That is proper recording, how you keep records on your farm. And also, I think that's the training that we have had so far between last year and this year. Then uh, the, uh, the ones we have been having outside Lagos State is the one we have been having in Abuja that um, some of um, our donors, that is IBP, also train us on um, the way and manner we are supposed to run our business and what the, 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 the way we are supposed to run the business and also how to also move to government on how to get things from the government. So they also taught us on how to do that. On the 29th of July 2021, the Lagos State Government empowered farmers in the state. After this um, pandemic, we had to look for 
what is the next line of action, what do we do? Uh, we have lost almost everything on the farm, even up till tomorrow. I can still, I, can, I, I cannot assess my rice farm because of um, the insecurity. And um, we have looked at what is the next line of action. And that was why we decided to go and visit our honorable commissioner that said that uh, she already understands our challenges and that she's looking into what she's going to do. Before, during the pandemic, that was nearly after the pandemic, there was palliatives that were shared to, to farmers. The palliatives, uh, they gave us some, some of the palliatives, but you know, you can count how many people that was given the palliatives. But after our visit with our commission, to, our, to our commissioner, the commissioner promised us that she was going to see to what she's going to do to farmers. So what they now did was that they took data of all the farmers that have been affected by the pandemic and also those that were not affected. And um, July 29th, that was um, last week, they empowered the farmers. We empowered with um, 400 bags of fish feeds, 100 bags of poultry feeds, smoking cleans, and um, collapsible tans. So those were things that we empowered as a group. So, Lagos State is trying as much as possible to fulfill their promise in empowering farmers and trying to at least give them a space where they can still continue their farm. But in the line of the, the federal government, we are still looking at the federal government has not done much because if they can do one third of what Lagos State has been doing for the farmers all over the states, we will, we will know that yes, that we, we have something to fall back on. We are still advocating that this 10% um, of um, the budget will be set aside for agri. That is the Malabo Maputo declaration, that the 10% of the budget will be set aside for agri. We are still talking about that because that has not been met. So if they can meet up to that, we will know that, yes, Bama Farmer has a lot to do. And uh, we will also be happy that we will have enough food to provide for government. So we are seeking and we are begging the government that we still, they should still do more. I know that what the minister has done has tried to give us something, but you can imagine giving two treasures, uh, one um, orange decor ticket and all that to more than 30,000 farmers from one state. How do you think we are going to share that? We are not political farmers, we are the real farmers. There are a lot of political farmers that they are working with, but we are the real farmers. I want to tell them that as far as we are the real farmers, things should come to us. And we should have a space, a place where when they are making policies, women farmers should also be involved because we are the ones that, that are going through these problems. So you, they cannot be there and be dictating for us that we have to tell them what we want. And that is what we are trying to advocate for that we want the government to include us in decision-making, implementation, and also formulation, that those things will help us and we'll tell them what we want. But if they stay there and dictate for us, that it will not get to us. Nigerians depend on produce from local farmers for their daily meals, has more than 80% buy their food from local markets. Now, to ensure a sustainable economy post-COVID, the government on federal and state level must ensure that the policies are not just on paper, but the farmers benefit generously from every allocation and promise made.